Hello and welcome to part one of your Sculpture at Home remote learning. Please remember that this is a pre-recorded video, so if at any point you need a little bit more time, you can pause and rewind. For this activity, you will need a pencil and some paper, as we are going to take down some key terms and then later on, we're going to develop and refine some of our artistic ideas by doing some drawing. You're also going to need a camera. So for this, you can use the camera on your mobile phone or the webcam on your laptop. Or if you have access to a digital camera, you're welcome to use that as well. And lastly, you're going to need some tin foil. And this is the material we're going to use to make our sculptures. So when developing an art project, there are lots of things you need to think about. Today, we are going to focus on three of those things. The first focus will be subject matter. And that means what you aim to communicate through your artwork. That's how you want viewers to feel when they see your work. The second thing is outcome. So how you will develop and refine your ideas to get the best outcome. And lastly, we're going to look at curation. So how you will exhibit your artwork and whether or not this is relevant to its subject matter. So you can refer back to your learning from this lesson, we're now going to start making a mind map. So I'd like you to get your sketchbook and or some paper and in the centre of your page put the title Sculpture at Home. We are then going to add a branch with the title Developing an Art Project. So thinking back to that previous slide about the three focuses of developing an art project. So I'd like you to add subject. So that was the subject matter. So what your artwork aims to communicate. Secondly, I'd like you to add outcome. So how you're going to develop and refine your ideas to get the best outcome. And lastly, I'd like you to add curation. So this was thinking about how you're going to exhibit your artwork and whether or not this impacts on the subject matter. I'm now going to show you a short video about an artist called Giacometti. I'd like you to listen out for those three key things whilst watching the video. So think about what his artwork is about, what he's trying to communicate. Think about the outcome of his work. So what do his pieces look like? And also the curation. So how are they exhibited within the gallery? You can pause this video to make sure you've got down all of those key terms. Alberto Giacometti was hugely ambitious from a young age with a great thirst for encountering art. The making is very evident and they're, they're very fragile and worked surfaces and really compelling to look at. was obsessed with working. He kind of never ever was happy with the moment to leave the sculpture. It was kind of never finished. And so the work all feels experimental and fresh. His work, I think, almost came to define a new way of thinking about humanity after the war. Many artists found it very difficult to depict mankind after the atrocities of Auschwitz, after the atomic bomb, after, after you know, man's inhumanity to man. 
And this depiction of a very fragile, thin, extended figure, almost a sort of skeletal remains of a man, was seen by many of the critics as epitomising a feeling of exhaustion and failure and guilt on the part of humanity. I hope you enjoyed that short clip. If you would like to see more of it, I will add a link at the end of this presentation. So when watching the video about Giacometti, were you able to listen out for what the subject matter of his work was? Were you able to see his outcome and how he curated his works? So Giacometti's subject matter was post-war trauma and he displayed this so his outcome was through gaunt figurative forms which were often curated in groups like groups of people. You can pause this video to make sure you've added all those bits to your mind map. Giacometti was regarded to have been involved in lots of different art movements. The two things we're going to focus on today are the fact that Giacometti was considered as an extensionist and also as a realist. If you don't know what those words mean, I've underlined little clues in each word. So if we look at extensionist, I have underlined the word extension. So think about what happens if you extend something. So Giacometti was called an extensionist because he extended all of the limbs of his figurative forms. He made these long gaunt forms. But he was also a realist. And a realist, when talking about an artist, means someone who makes work to portray what they feel and what they see to be true. So thinking about the post-war trauma, this was how Giacometti was interpreting what he could see around him. So he was mostly known for his figurative work and he developed this motif of the suffering human figure depicting post-war trauma. I'm now going to show you a short clip about a conceptual artist who explores a similar subject matter. So listen out for what that subject matter is. I also want you to look at his artwork and see his outcome and also look to see how he exhibits his artwork. Actually, my exhibition here at the power plant is um, presenting uh, different works which deal with um, political traumas and individual traumas, and uh, always in the light of uh, colonization, slavery, and let's say the, what is at the core uh, legacy of the um, history of this continent where we are now, because this continent is a colony. I'm, I'm very interested by ideas uh, of um, uh, keeping the thread with the genealogy of uh, our history. Why, why are we here and how come that we came here? And Because uh, I think that the whole mass media system today, even contemporary art, is uh, in a in terms of political uh, um, legacy such as colonialism or slavery, uh, denying what has really happened, probably because also people don't want to hear about that. It's, they are not nice things. I'm, I mean, uh... I hope you found that short clip interesting. And if you'd like to see more, I'll add a link at the end of this presentation. So Keda Atia is a conceptual artist. Once again, I've underlined a clue for what that might mean. I've underlined the word concept, and I've done this because conceptual artists focus more on the concept, which is the meaning of their work, rather than the aesthetic values. So when you think about classical painting, 
and they use lots of traditional techniques like oils, for example. A conceptual artist is focusing more on how they make you as the viewer feel. They are trying to tell you a story. So Keda Atia explores how societies view their cultural past and the social impact it has on their lives. So he researches societies and cultures who have been through traumatic experiences and looks at the effects and the impacts this has on everyday life. Going back to our mind map, there's one more key word I would like you to add, and that is conceptual. So meaning over aesthetic. So a conceptual artist focuses more on what they are trying to communicate to their viewer through their artwork, opposed to how it looks, so the aesthetic, and also traditional artistic skills. So they are putting meaning over aesthetic. You can pause this video to make sure you've got down all of your notes. We are now going to start thinking about our practical activity. So thinking back to developing an art project, we firstly need our subject matter. So the subject matter for your art project today is going to be based on refugees. I'd like you to take a moment to look at these photographs and really think how they make you feel. And then I'd like you to go one step beyond that and think about how the people in the photographs are feeling. Think about the emotions and perhaps what they're going through. Now that we have a subject matter, we are going to develop and refine some of our ideas in drawing. I've put here some examples of Giacometti's sketches that he does in preparation for his artworks. So as you'll notice by looking at these drawings, he's not focusing on fine detail. He's focusing on the expression of emotion and movement. I'm going to show you a short demonstration video to explain what I would like you to do when drawing. OK, when you're drawing, what I don't want to see is fine little pictures where you're concentrating on the faces and how people look and things like that. That's not what I want to see. What I want to see is lots of space and lots of movement, okay? So I'm gonna start throwing a head in here, put a little torso and some hips. <clears throat> okay, and I'm concentrating on the movement, okay? And then I might take this forward. I'm going to put him, put his head a little bit further down. I'm really not thinking about the form, okay? I'm thinking about the emotions that I'm trying to portray in my in my pictures, okay? And I'm going to keep on working this. Perhaps I'll start to do some together where maybe I could have a child in here. And they're going to be held by their mother like this, okay? So I'm really starting, I'm going to go over here, start to work on a couple more. And I'm really just thinking about how I'm going to make them relate to one another, okay? Okay, so in doing these drawings, I'm getting lots of movement and lots of expression. So I don't want to see those fine details. I want to be seeing the movement and how, how you can express the feelings that you want to express within the figure, okay? Okay. You can pause this video to ensure you are looking at the photographs for the duration of your drawing. Well done. You've gotten to the end of our Sculpture at Home Part 1. 
Next week, in part two, we're going to start developing and making our sculptures.